got word that Purdue was closing this facility down. to see that auger is still standing upright uh, about four o'clock this morning I heard the wind blowing pretty good and gusting ah uh, but it did knock over my chair that's not good yeah I heard the wind gusting and the first thing I thought of was that auger sitting up at the bin I've had them blow over before and bend them all up and yeah, that's never good either, but hey, we're good today. Ah, uh, we got a few trucks in here this morning, one on the dump. I think there's at least one truck behind uh, that one waiting. Uh, we've got one on the scale. And then of course there's me. Well, about a year and a half ago, uh, maybe two years ago, we got word that Purdue was closing this facility down. Uh, they were going to close it in um, early spring of 2020. Well, everybody got in an uproar. The politicians got involved and um, Purdue decided, okay, we're going to give it two more years. Uh, maybe we can sell it. Maybe we can figure up with, uh, a different plan uh, to keep this open. So, our two years will be expiring uh, March of next year, so March 2023. Well, it sounds like they have not found a buyer, they have not found another solution, and unfortunately, at this point, it looks like this place is going to close. Um, yeah, that's uh, th there's a lot of local guys around here that are upset about that, not sure what they're going to do. Uh, I, it, it may cause some of them to just quit farming altogether. Purdue has been very good to us. They're, they're prompt on their payment. They're fair in their grading. Um, they, they, they've just been a great company to deal with. Now, they have other locations, um, just not as convenient for us or for me anyway. Uh, so we'll see what happens. There was a meeting scheduled a couple of weeks ago to bring the farmers together to, to give us the latest update. But at the last minute, that meeting was canceled, and I'm, I, I'm not really sure why. They said there wasn't enough uh, uh, farmers that had responded uh, to come to the meeting. I think there was more to it than that. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Um, I've got another elevator I can deliver to that's, you know, in about the same drive hour, 20 minutes or so not quite as convenient or easy to get into uh, eh, we'll, we'll see I don't I don't want to have to buy another truck to haul this further I guess I could put up another bin um, but it's it's unfortunate so uh, March March of 2023 is when this place is scheduled to close down now so hey if anybody's interested in buying a grain facility and keep it running uh, you've got one right here about a million bushel capacity I think unfortunately well they do have a couple of uh, newer bins here to the left but uh, it needs it needs a lot of work to it I believe it was built uh, an article I just read last night it was built uh, about 40 years ago and not a whole lot has been done to it since it started out as a southern states facility and then Purdue bought it I think the article said in 2002 but we've been dealing with it ever since it opened as a southern states um, it's it's quite a bit of acreage here probably well I say quite a bit I don't know five six seven acres thereabouts empty lot here in the back I think that is included with it uh, and it's a great location as well. Uh, so, well, there you go. If you're interested in buying a, a grain elevator, here it is. I guess I 
should say the reason that we have been given for Purdue deciding to close this down is it is not making any money. Uh, so they, the, the grain comes into the, this facility and then from here they haul it over to their chicken plants uh, or feed mills over on the eastern shore uh, over to Salisbury in that region. That's about, I don't know, maybe a two hour drive from here. Uh, I have noticed the decline in how many people are coming in here over the last uh, six or seven years. I think I have pictures of, what year was that? Maybe 2015. They actually had corn piled out in the parking lot. There was so much corn and so many people coming in here. But I, what I have noticed over the last five, six, seven years, a lot of guys are buying their own trucks now uh, and hauling the stuff further because the basis is better. So when Purdue says they're losing money, well, it's because of the volume and probably because they're not being competitive on the price uh, to get more grain in here. I don't know, like, you know, right now their basis for corn is 50 under December. I can remember a normal basis for harvest time was 10 under December. So have, have the economics changed that much that, you know, they have to go to a lower basis? Uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, we've always been told that we a, we are a corn deficit area, meaning we cannot grow enough corn for our usage. You know, a large chicken population on the eastern shore of Maryland, uh, they, those chickens eat a lot of corn, so that's what makes, it, makes us a corn deficit region. So they end up bringing a lot of corn in from the Midwest by rail car, so is that cheaper than bringing it into this facility and then hauling it by truck over to the eastern shore. I guess it is, and maybe that's why that basis is uh, so low right now. So a lot of guys in my area are hauling corn three, three and a half hours now. They're going up to Pennsylvania with it. They're hauling it directly to the eastern shore or going out to uh, uh, the middle of Virginia. So, you know, an hour and 20 minute drive versus a three hour, three and a half hour drive. I guess the economics are there and that's why they're hauling it that far. I, uh, that's hard to believe by the time you spend all that money in a truck and, and paying a driver to be in that truck. Uh, but that's what they're doing. I haven't put a pencil to it myself, but it, it must be working out uh, for them. So. I guess Purdue could pay more money here to, to bring the volume up to make it more profitable, but then if they're paying more money, is it more profitable? I don't know. I'm not in the chicken industry. But that's the story, and I'm sticking to it. And when I talk about maintenance, there's a prime example right there of the trough worn out and so corn is uh, just spilling out of there. I should probably bring them a roll of um, Gorilla duct tape. That's some good stuff and that would fix that hole. Alright, the trucks are still rolling in steady this morning. It is, uh, what time is it? I don't even know. Almost 10.30. Okay, again, uh, there's your green ele elevator for sale if you would like to purchase one in Southern Maryland. Well, now I'm under the gun here. The weather forecast has changed. Yesterday, this is Thursday, just got back from taking a load of corn to Purdue. It's uh, Thursday about midday. So yesterday the forecast was for the rain not to start until Friday evening so I knew I had plenty of time to get this corn out because I think I still have to haul another load to Purdue 
Well, now the forecast has changed. Rain by tomorrow morning, Friday morning. I'm not sure that I can finish this field uh, today because I don't think I have the storage to hold it all and still needing to take another load to Purdue. Eh, we'll, we'll see. I hope I have enough room to hold it all and can finish it today. All right, let's jump on here and get things rolling.